sliceofsci-fi.com. Hey, Slicers, this is George Chase over at Hypno Comics here in Ventura, and I am with Wendy and Richard Peeney, the creators of ElfQuest. So we're going to talk to them a little bit about this awesome American fantasy book that's been around for, how long has it been around? 35 years this year. 35 years this year. I started reading this in 84 mm -hmm. when it was under the Epic banner and uh, loved it. Still do. Uh, looking forward to what you guys have coming out mm -hmm. um, in October. So for the people, we got a lot of new collectors, um, you know, a lot of young people are coming into the industry, which I love. Um, Tell them a little bit about ElfQuest. Who wants to just well, give them the premise? ElfQuest was the beginning of a lot of things. ElfQuest was the first comic book series in America to be influenced by manga and anime, which at the time, to me, made a lot of sense uh, design-wise because ma uh, the manga and anime style lends itself very well to fantasy. Mm -hmm. And uh, our characters were action characters as well, and manga lends itself well to that yeah, too. So yeah. it was a great, it was a, a, a serendipity to choose that. Yeah. Um, oh heavens! Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it it it. We did everything wrong in the beginning because we didn't know any better. We just wanted to get this thing out there. So so um, we produced a comic that was black and white mm -hmm. when. Mainstream comics were in color. We 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 priced it at a dollar when mainstream comics were twelve or twenty cents. Um, <laughs> it was fantasy. Nobody knew what to do with fantasy. And God it, help us, it was drawn written by a woman. That was that, that was my <laughs> next point. Uh huh. I mean, she is the the creative lightning bolt behind this. And uh, comics was then and still to a large extent is a boys' club. Mm -hmm. uh, True. These days, even though there are more women in it than ever before, yeah. um, it was also the first uh, independent comic to make uh, a real big splash in the direct market, and then the um, the newsstand uh, the newsstand market. Now it came out with Warp Graphics to begin with. That's our company. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, we still own it. We have licensed it. Uh, we licensed it to Marvel right. for reprints. Uh, we licensed it to DC in the early 2000s, and now we're with Dark Horse. We we are independent. We are not isolated. Gotcha, gotcha. Love creator-owned stuff. Epic was a creator-owned banner for Marvel yes. back in the day. For sure, because so. they they were yeah. becoming aware of how many creators were stepping aside from the mainstream comics to do, to their, do their own, own stuff. thing. Yeah, and they thought, well, let's rope them in some other way. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you see going from? You know, trial and error is great, and that's usually how a lot of creators start. Like you said, you said mm -hmm. you did everything wrong, but you're here 35 years later. Mm -hmm. And know? we're just finding new things to do wrong. That's, that's all it true. is. It's a continuous <laughs> evolution. That's true. So, yeah, don't let anything discourage you. Just keep <laughs> making your books. Um, so you guys went uh, with Warp, uh, Black and White, to uh, the Epic Banner with Marvel in color, mm. and then you were with DC. Now, mm -hmm. forgive me, I don't remember that. Uh, <laughs> I loved uh, everything in Epic. I loved it in Epic. I was an Epic junkie back in the day. So we 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 are the um, kings of recycling material. <laughs> um, kings and queens. I know there's another bunch of queens there. Of, of recycling material. Um, the first appearance of Elfquest in color was actually by another smallish company called Donning Starblaze in 1981. They put the first five issues together between covers colored it mm -hmm. and got it into bookstores like at that time Borders and Barnes and Nobles right. and, and Brentano's and all of those and that was a a small nuclear explosion in the bookstore market. That's right. Um, nobody had seen graphic novels in bookstores before not like that. There were some collections of, of uh, you know old comics right. but not new graphic novel material and they sold like Gangbusters. Good, yeah. And once the bookstores saw that, um, then the bookstores began to say, "Hey, I, 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 is there any more like this out there? You got any yeah. more like that at home?" <laughs> um, so we like to say, and there's not too much hyperbole to it, that if you go into the Barnes and Noble and you see the big graphic novel section, ElfQuest started that. Yeah, props, props to yes. the peenies for and that. <laughs> now, DC again did a series of archive books they mm -hmm. also did the small they uh, they were trying for the manga market so right. they were doing the smallish 
paperback books like the manga books that were all big a few years yeah. ago. That was a lot of fun because I got to take the artwork apart and reformat it. Um, back in the day, back in the 70s, it was kind of a style in comics to load pages with panels and lots of word balloons. Yeah. It, pages were very crowded back then. And I followed that motif. So uh, being able to take the art apart and put maybe no more than three or four panels per page to do the, the manga for To make DC. it in that small, smaller format. Yeah, it really enabled it to breathe. Yeah, that's so good. So it was fun to do that. Oh, yeah. Maybe give you an opportunity to go back and like do some, you know. I did because there, there were uh, points at which I had to either lengthen a panel or mm -hmm. add more material because I took a balloon out. Right. And, and uh, so pe people got a different reading experience Different with that. pacing. Exactly, different pacing. Good. Well, yeah. yeah. So it was fun. Yeah. Um, let's talk about you guys are now with Dark Horse now. Mm. Oh, yes. Uh, October 9th, I think, is yep. your special. Yes. One shot's coming yep. up. Um, so for the people who, like I said, are younger coming into this, who don't know much about, you know, Chief Cutter and his wolf riders and stuff. Well, that's why we've done a prologue, which is being called... The Dark Horse Final Quest Special, right. which is coming out October 9th yeah. uh, and premiering at uh, New York Comic Con. Okay. And uh, the prologue, the purpose of the prologue is it's a 60-page graphic novel, nice. which reintroduces old-time readers to the characters and what they've been doing and what, what is likely to happen now. Okay. But it also really sets the chess pieces on the board for people who have never heard of ElfQuest before. That's good. You get to know a lot of the characters in their in their natural habitat, interacting with each other, and 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 without being hit over the head with a hammer and being told what's happening. Yeah. You you get a real idea of the relationships and who who cares for who and who's against who and so you this know, is going to be it, a great jumping on point for new yes, readers it Re really is refresher for us older folk absolutely oh. i would <laughs> i would describe it that way perfectly okay yeah you can have that you can use that <laughs> put it on the book <laughs> <laughs> so um you guys just got back from comic-con too <laughs> yeah ah, right everybody's decompressed <laughs> from comic-con <laughs> it's fun we love it right we it love was it, it was <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, Wolfie? It was, yeah. Wolfie thinks, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was intense, as all Comic Cons lately are. Right. But it was an incredible experience for us. Spectacular. Yeah, we, really. we, we, we celebrated ElfQuest's 35th anniversary there. Congratulations. And he gave the slide, ElfQuest slideshow of his life. Really? On his That's right. birthday. It's like, I, I feel like Olivier. You know, after doing the perfect Hamlet, I don't know what I did, and I can never do it again. Lightning in a bottle. Lightning in a bottle. Um, we had some great panels. Uh, we did our first signing at the Dark Horse booth, and uh, God, we love those people. Dark Horse is a great company. I'm a big supporter of what they do. Um, I love that they have a lot of creator-owned stuff. Uh -huh. um, well, they get us because they come from that background. Yeah. When we were with DC, DC honestly didn't know what to do with us. They didn't know how to market ElfQuest. They didn't understand who ElfQuest's audience was. Yeah, I mean, because and it's a fantasy genre, yeah. and it wouldn't fit in their mainstream, and it, maybe Wait. it would fit under their Vertigo banner. You never heard of it. Yeah, the DC, no. <laughs> See, look at that. Wolfie <laughs> growling at DC. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but see, Mike Richardson goes all the way back to the early 80s in the independent market, yeah. uh, independent comics, and um, we've known him for that long. Yeah. So he's been kind of quietly courting us mm. for a while, and when it came time for us to make our next move, our next big move, we uh, we had some good discussion with with Mike and Dark Horse, and oh, ultimately yeah. went with them because uh, they've got plans for ElfQuest that are blowing us even away. Good. And good. we share a little history with them. They made some fabulous merch for us. Some uh, lovely ElfQuest ceramic figures that are, are practically sold out. We're told. Oh really? So and they're, we're talking about doing more. So. Um, yeah, they do yeah. do some nice figures. They do the collector tin ones. Yes. Along, the little statues with the buttons, which is a great line for mm -hmm. them. Um, but on, as far as the creator-owned books that they're, I wouldn't, I don't want to say grabbing up, but they're they're putting out some 
you know, like Dream Thief is good stuff. And yeah. this is a great segue into your your Edgar Allan Poe thing because he's got <laughs> they have Richard Corbin doing all these Poe adaptions. I know, but I got to tell you, Mask was too hot for them. They, right. they, was they, it? They was passed. It? Oh, yeah. Dark Horse, they come passed. on. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're we're talking about. Hot. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I got, it. I got you. I got you. Incandescent. <laughs> so, Mask of the Red Death is... Well, as, as Richard explained to you earlier, yeah. uh, uh, ElfQuest was optioned by Warner Brothers in 2008, mm-hmm. and Warner Brothers kindly asked us not to do anything with ElfQuest for the four, period of four years of the option, because they just wanted to keep the property consolidated, and so I had this four-year period where I could do another kind of project, and uh, Mask of the Red Death, based on Edgar Allan Poe's short story had been something that had been percolating with me for a long, long time because I got to do everything in it that I can't do in Elf Quest. (laughs) 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 Um, Mask of the Red Death was just an eight-page short story by Edgar Allan Poe with really no specific characters in it. However, uh, the the wonderful skeleton of the story was there and I'd always been fascinated with it. So (laughs) I just uh, added a lot of characters and a lot of juicy interaction juicy and, and <laughs> <That's> <laughs> she's not being metaphoric no i'm not <laughs> and and uh, the uh, one of the interesting aspects of it is that it's a yaoi do you know the word yaoi no okay it's a japanese word that basically means boys love which means the stars of the story are are a gay couple of gorgeous males and yaoi is is rising in popularity by leaps and bounds right now among the female audience in America. Okay, good. So I did it for them. Good, it is the right. great American yaoi. <laughs> <laughs> and the most exciting thing about it, it is is that it is now being developed as a Broadway style musical. Somebody's got to pick this up. It's four hundred page epic, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, and they when they pick it up, they'll pick up a musical too. <laughs> you heard it here, right here, slicers. Look for that. The Mask of the Red Death. Epic 400-page graphic novel coming someday, right, from some smart publisher and the Broadway musical. So, that's great. Um, I like to ask our guests when they sit down and chat with us, and I appreciate you guys coming up here. Um, and Wolfie, too. And Wolfie. Wolfie looks like And your little dog, too. Crashing. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you reading nowadays in the market that you're just totally digging on? Uh, oh. Don't. That's a tough Good one. Lord. The number one answer for you not is like, we're just too busy making well, stuff. Well, you qualified it by saying in the market. Yeah. Okay, so you go um, first. We met, lo these many years ago, <laughs> because we were both fans of the same comics. And we actually met through the comics. Oh. She wrote a letter into Silver Surfer number five in 1969. I and liked back the then, letter. They published addresses. They pu- oh. you know, the fan letters pages had mailing addresses, you know? <laughs> and so, Creeping. Uh, Creeping. Yeah. <laughs> so I got but, 500 but letters. Stalking was much more difficult then. <laughs> you didn't have the internet. Cost so the I, liked, I liked the letter. Right. And mm. I wrote to her, come to find out, so did a couple hundred other <laughs> guys, because she was one of three girls in the world right. who was reading like comics. comic books. <laughs> But she liked mine, and she wrote back. We, mm. we started a correspondence. We eventually got together. Um, we were both fans of comics back then. It was Marvel's Marvel in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, we began ElfQuest mm. in 78. And when you work at something, at least this is true of me, when you work in something, you don't then go home and play with the same stuff. Right. Yes. We were doing comic books, and yes. so I turned to other um, uh, pastimes to, you know, for, in my to spare time. what you're doing during the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I know I haven't, and I think it's true of Wendy as well, we haven't been reading a lot of recent comics. Now, I can say, I, I'll give you two titles right now okay. that just uh, blew me away, maybe three. Uh, one was Marvel's. Um, that um, Mark Wade, Alex Ross, or is it? It was Alex Ross, but I think oh, it was Kingdom a Kurt, Come. Kingdom Come was Kurt Busiek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alex Ross. Marvels is great. A- another one was Kingdom Come. Yeah. Uh, Mark Wade, and the third one I just saw out there was Darwin Cook's um, New Frontier. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. These are incredibly, wonderfully um, creative reimagining of long existing stories. Agreed. But it's that twist that these creators gave to those stories that hooked me. Right. 
Um, a lot of what's going on now, I, I'm sorry, you can, you can hang me up to dry. They're busy making an awesome book, <laughs> all right? We're, we're busy Don't doing judge. that. <laughs> um, but it's not what we remember comics being. Yeah. So we're doing our own. Good, you know? good. Sure. No, that's, I, I think that's where a lot of voids get filled. In, mm -hmm. in the industry is, you know, I, I think that something's lacking here. I mean, I'm going to step up and produce and fill the hole. Well, for me, I come, I come by my interest in comics by way of animation. Right. I was always an animation fan from the time I was so high. Mm. And um, discovering anime and manga just solidified that because there is a very cartoonish aspect to the drawing style. Yeah. So to this day, I still enjoy reading uh, some manga and there are some anime I still enjoy watching. But that that is probably the extent of my comics, serious comics reading. Yeah, no, that, yeah, that's, that's fully understandable. Now, um, if you like that now, what was it, back in the mid 80s, you guys were the epic at the same time that they were putting out the Akira book. Yes. Yeah, so yes. that might have been a nice little coupling for... Mm, well, I, th I think that it sort of uh, helped people realize, because, you know, when ElfQuest first came out, a lot of people were like, what's this? They had <laughs> yeah. never seen... Uh, they were completely unfamiliar with the Japanese uh, manga style. Yeah. And so, what's this? The eyes are too big, the men look like women, the <laughs> <laughs> they're, you know, they're all Which short. Is which well, is why we published know? it ourselves, because we took it to Marvel, we took it to DC, we took it to a couple of independent publishers. They didn't know what to do they didn't with know it. What to do yeah, with exactly. It. And right. then here comes Dragon Ball Z in the mid 90s, and all of a sudden there is a craze for anime and manga like you've never seen. And ElfQuest becomes more relevant than ever because it's just like, oh, well, this is manga. Yeah. Everybody looked at it that way, and, and suddenly we were cool again. You were cool again, and you were around for, <laughs> you know, what, 30 years, and you're like, where have you guys been? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Anime Expo, and another huge mm -hmm. convention. Um, mm -hmm. Did you guys go there? Uh, I, I went been. last year, didn't make it this okay. year. It's just too many cons this year. Yeah, no, there's yeah. a lot of conventions going on. And that's uh, that's another thing. How do you guys feel about geeks and nerds being so mainstream nowadays? Well, first being of all, I don't like those words fair enough. any more than I like some words they use for other gotcha uh you know gotcha. sort of fringe groups. i'm profiling uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah now there are plenty of people who do like you know like our friend stephanie thorpe and paula rhodes uh, proudly admit that they are girl geeks yeah and they like that but i i've never liked those words okay so let me rephrase so. how do you feel about this medium and art form that we are all into being as mainstream as it is now. I'm I think it's successful. That's just my, from a, you know, I well, like it. I honor, I honor Big Bang Theory, and it's what now, five th yes. seasons for seven. making seven, seven, making it happen. Yes, I because agree. They, I totally agree with you. If there's one source of making geekdom cool, it's that show. It is. And, uh, and so it's been a big change, and a lot of people have, I'm going to say it, have been literally coming out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that would have been shame, ashamed of their hobby. Yeah. You know, uh, they, they are out and they are proud. Yeah. And, and I love that because uh, other groups are coming out and proud too. Yes, that's great. So. That's great. Yeah, um, there are some retailers and other creators that just don't like Big Bang Theory. Uh, mm. I personally, I mean, if we're going to keep this sort of hobby and medium going, you need new, new people. Mm -hmm. You need new people. You need younger people. And if yes. it takes a show like Big Bang to bring them in, then I'm, I'm all for it as a retailer. Hey, Wolfie, how's it going? <laughs> He's you a taste good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the other thing that I like to touch on is, you know, we do, uh, we support creator own, we support local artists here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, what advice would you give any up and coming or young creators if they <laughs> Trial and error, anything? It, it's, uh, you go first. Well, well, okay. We get asked this um, a lot. Yeah because people look at our success, they look at our fame, and they ask us, how can we do like what you did? And on the one side, we're all for, just like you, we're all for everybody taking their shot. Right. Rise or fall, but do it. Do it. Don't right. sit yeah. on it, yeah. mm -hmm. just get out there and do it. The flip side of that, however, is when we started in 78, the direct market was brand new. Mm -hmm. There was nothing out there in terms of independent comics, very little in the yeah. way of independent comics. We had a wide open field and we went into that field and exploded it yeah. and, and we've never looked back. Mm -hmm. But that was print, 
There was no such thing as, as the internet. Right. Mm -hmm. um, everything that we, we got in the way of word publicity. Of mouth. Yes, word of mouth. And what we say now is, well, you can't do it the way we did it. Right. The, the world is just way mm -hmm. too different. Right. But you have tools, you have opportunities, um, technologies that we could not have dreamed of 35 years ago. And just put yourself out there using those tools mm -hmm. and, you know, cream rises. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, now, I mean, look, the, the, the Internet obviously is a, a huge tool for for, uh, up and over for all creators. Um, Absolutely, that's the way we launched Mask. We knew that just bringing Mask out in print was uh, was going to be a bit of a risk, and so we started it on yeah. online first yeah. as an animated web comic, and also as a, a, a graphic novel pager, and it helped gain quite an audience for it. And you guys did something digital with ElfQuest too, didn't you? Sure did. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. During that hiatus, that four-year hiatus, mm -hmm. when Warner Brothers said don't put out any new books. Right. Um, we were faced with a problem because the print books were going out of print. Our inventory was almost down to nothing. Mm -hmm. And yet, people were saying via email and, and on the different uh, 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 Facebook and whatever, um, where do I find your books? I, I've got issue five, but where do I find one through four? And I thought to myself, mm, this is not good. Right about then, I think it was Marvel was just starting to get into the micro-economics, the micro-payment thing of putting an issue for 99 cents yeah. out there. And I looked at that and I thought, all right, but you know, that's way too much work for me. <laughs> I, I have limited resources up here. Gotcha. So I said, I'm going to give him everything we've ever done for free. Mm -hmm. And I scanned or had help scanning uh, something almost 7,000 pages mm. wow. of ElfQuest, both by us and by other people that we've worked with. And over a period of about two years, that stuff went online to the ElfQuest.com website. And you can go there, read everything we've ever done Plug it. for free. Tell, it, tell them where they can find it. Yes. It's, it's ElfQuest.com, and it's really simple. You go there. There's a tab that says Digital Comics. You click on that. You have a table of contents. Knock yourselves out because it's all there and you don't have to pay a cent. And it's one of the smartest things Richard's ever done because it just helped to generate buzz all over again in a newer and bigger way and to get us a lot of new readers who wouldn't, wouldn't have access to the comics otherwise. So that solves the free digital problem for you guys. <laughs> now, um, going with Dark Horse, Dark Horse puts together some really nice collected editions in the forms of omnibuses, hardcovers. Yes. Do you have any plans to do any collected ElfQuest stuff with them? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. When we started talking seriously <laughs> with Dark Horse, um, and, and, and it wasn't much of a condition that we had to lay out because Mike Richardson came at us right, right. with <laughs> grandiose plans, and we do love grandiose. Um, they're doing new material, uh, most notably Final Quest, which right. starts in October. October 9th. They are very interested in repackaging the existing library. They don't want to make it look like what's gone before, so they've got some cool ideas for different page counts and different sizes. Okay. The, there are these absolutely glorious, huge um, artists' editions. Artists' editions are great. Uh, where they, they, you see the original art boards as they look. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we've got every one of Wendy's. They want to do that. That would be a great artist edition. Uh, it's going to be a great artist like edition. It. We're yeah, already right. talking about that. We're already talking about that. Uh, they want to do white the classic. Out and all. Yeah, the <laughs> white out and blue line and mistakes. Yeah, no, the artist edition because they do. They scan the black and white pictures, but they scan them in in full color. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I love it. They also want to. This is something we were never able to do, but they're going to get ElfQuest Digital through the Dark Horse comic apps. So. Um, you can read it on your iPhone and your Android and your Kindle and your Nook and, and all of those things. And probably three other things I'm forgetting. They're very <laughs> ambitious. Well, I got statues. 
right? Uh, yes. Merchandise. Merchandise. Yes. Yeah. We're talking about motion comics. Motion comics are always cool. This and, is true. Uh, yeah. Something else. Let's see. Um, what else? <laughs> as a brick and mortar guy, I'm excited about the print stuff. Oh yes. Uh, artist editions, especially. I mean, you see, we have them up there. Yes. I, oh yeah. I'm a big supporter of that format. I mean, just because I do like to see the art. Before it's polished, and we we get we get email and communication from our fans all the time. Good, they love the fact that they can see it on their iPhone soon and their iPad and all of that. But as much as we hear about that, we hear, "Are you going to have print books?" Yeah, mm -hmm. and we say we wouldn't do it if we couldn't have print books because we're both I bibliophiles as well. I like to hold something, I like to smell Tactile. the ink, I like to turn the but, page yeah. and have it in my lap there. If people want to see the original art, tell them where they can actually go see it. Oh. oh. Is it on display somewhere? <laughs> well, sort of, kind of. Uh-huh. Comic-Con a year ago, we were approached by a representative from Columbia University mm -hmm. in New York City. And um, they are building up a very, very impressive graphic novel archive. Wow. Uh, Chris Claremont donated his X-Men scripts and so on and so forth to that. And they wanted to know if we were interested in donating ElfQuest. And we said, yes. It provides an incredibly safe place. Right. It removes the question from our backs of what to do with it. <laughs> and Because uh, I don't want to give it to my brother-in-law and then... And then have it show up on eBay. eBay, right. Yeah. Oh, and John's going to appreciate that one. I, 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 I know he is. Anyway, um, so we have started, and that's, that's uh, uh, an ongoing process, scanning all of her art, very high resolution, very faithful, and then it's going down to the Columbia University Rare Book Library archives. Very so nice. students of the graphic novel form and of comics right. will have access to all of her original art Look at, that. at Columbia. Donating and that stuff and yes. giving all the other stuff free online, you guys are too generous, You're too generous. Well, no, because we've, we've ex hello. Hi, Wolfie. <laughs> we've experienced tremendous payback. Uh, the elves have been very, very good to us in so many different ways. Good. It's It's ridiculous, but the best way is uh, in people's gratitude. Uh, you know, just hundreds of people came up at San Diego Con thanking us for ElfQuest and, act and actually telling us how it had affected their lives when they were young and in some cases helped them through some very rough times. You know, um, comic books can be a safe harbor. Yes. They can be a safe harbor. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of that. I, I think that um, they can change people's lives. Yes, so, they can. Yeah. Certainly changed ours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. They've, cha they've changed many. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of the comic medium uh, for numerous reasons. So, um, do you guys have anything that you want to close with, say, to your fans, other than go to your local comic book shop online October 9th? We're going to, you know, ElfQuest is coming back, but anything closing you want to say? John, I'm kidding. No, he's not. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you right back to our fans and friends who have supported us for 35 years. All right, and I want to say thank you, Richard and Wendy, for coming here and sitting down with us. I, I love to sit down, especially with creators that I enjoy reading. I'm sorry I missed the DC run, but I have all the <laughs> epic ones. So thank you again. And Slicers, be sure to go to ElfQuest.com. Check out all the ElfQuest stuff that's online, motion comics. Is there motion comics online? We don't have No, that's comics. not yet. Okay, not I messed yet. that up. The, free, the free comics. <laughs> free but, comics. But, 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 but the ElfQuest.com and MaskOfTheRedDeath.com. Yes, Mask of the Red Both Death. Both of those sites, both of our major properties. But don't go to Mask if you're under 18. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Just don't tell anybody you're doing it. <laughs> All right. Thanks. This is George from Hypno signing out, Slicers. Have a great day. Slice of Sci-Fi.com.